Hi guys and welcome back. In this video it's going to be a bit of a weird one for me. A few months ago some of you will have seen this clip in one of my videos and I've had a, a bit of a week. I don't know why I'm laughing. I invested a fair bit of money trying to create this cool looking table and it's not worked. <laughs> Yeah, it's really not worked. So what got me so fed up? This. This was my most ambitious project to that date and probably still is now. I wanted to play with epoxy. I had an idea in my head that was stuck in it like a worm and I wanted to create something unique that I hadn't seen before. Trouble is, it all went wrong. So the first half of the video is going to be me in the past and then today I'm going to try and see if I can salvage it. Or if it's a £150 going in the skip kind of mistake. Let's go. I've got this pack of OSB loft panels. I got them in B&Q the other day. They're about £4 each. And I've wanted to use them, but I don't know what for. And I showed some people at work my coffee table builds from the other day. And they said that even though they were small and round, they wouldn't fit in their house. Now I know what you're thinking. Maybe they were just saying that to be polite because they actually hated them and didn't want to buy them. However, I'm not taking it as that. I'm going to make a new coffee table, but this time I'm going to go long and narrow and use OSB and epoxy and coins. I began the project by taking down the edges of the OSB board using my track saw. Now I needed to do this because they're actually interlocking, so one piece slots into the other, but that's not really suitable for what I need. I decided OSB because I really like the look of it. Matt Esley's just moved into a new workshop, but check out his channel, some of his older videos. He's got OSB in the background and I do love the look of it. Everyone's got their opinions, but I'm with Matt Esley on this. I love the look of OSB. I think it's stunning. It's just something about scraps all glued together and mangled that appeals to me, in case you hadn't guessed. So next up was the frame, if you like, that the OSB is going to sit in. Now I'm just using framing timber, but even that's not cheap nowadays. I'm cutting them down to a rough length, a little bit longer than I actually need them, because then it's a bit easier to go through the thickness, so in case there's any snipe, it's not going to be a problem. The main reason for putting these through the thicknesser was to not smooth them out, they were actually quite smooth already. It was to take off the rounded edges. I needed square wood so that it would slide nicely along a fence because I am going to need to use the router table for this one. With everything gone through the thicknesser, I then cut down to the actual lengths I needed, giving each one a 45 degree where they're going to butt up against one another. So I didn't have the bit size for the router that was wide enough to cut that groove that the actual OSB is going to sit in. But one thing I learned from Bourbon Moth was if you set your fence up so that the bit lines up with the outer edge, run it through one side and then turn it round on itself and then run it through again, then you don't need to move the fence at all. This little tip worked amazingly well for me and everything worked out perfect. I just did that on all four edges of the table and it didn't take very long at all. I will say though, I'm using a decent bit in the router now. I'm slowly replacing all of the cheap multi-pack ones that I bought and the new carbide ones are so much more efficient, so much less burning. So there it is. I'm really pleased with those mitres, they all come together nicely. I'm pleased with the depth here for an epoxy pour. That's about a 10mm epoxy pour, which I'm hoping is thick enough. I really like it. I know it's just like a shaker style setup, and I know that it's considered basic woodworking, but for me, with my brain, doing all these measurements, and stuff actually fitting together. It's pretty incredible. So many long time viewers will know burning wood is my favorite method of finishing it. However, for this project, I'm not going to be burning the whole project. What I'm trying to do is just burn the rim on the inside that the epoxy will sit up against. I'm gonna be trying to use a slightly darker smoky epoxy mixing some black and gray dye. 
but for that to be effective I don't want it going up against yellow looking pine so I'm just burning that part where the kind of rim the border of the table is going to sit against the epoxy I didn't want to stain it because I don't know how things react to epoxy next came a very meticulous glue up now this was a bit of a predicament for me I wanted to have as much glue as humanly possible to plug any gaps that epoxy could potentially leak through but on the flip side of that I didn't want so much that it would squeeze out onto the OSB board remember this is going to be covered in see-through epoxy any squeeze out is going to be visible and I don't think it will be easy to get off the OSB board don't want to sleep in cause I got something to prove I gotta take what I hate and finally make a move I think of you and all the shit you don't do well I'ma make hella sure that I don't become you I have no regrets yet out of my chest obviously it's like three mil too short of course it is why wouldn't it be I don't know how strong that bit on the end is, but it's my own need to get this glued up. I feel this pain, you already know. Turn that to gains, let my money show. I've got these things that I can't let go. Watch me turn this life into something that you can never run. So fight and fight and die. Now whilst that might not be the most professional thing to do to a mitre that isn't quite there. It's the only thing that's worked for me in the past. Lather it with glue, press it in with your fingers, sprinkle it with sawdust, then put, put <coughs> swallow the sawdust, then put your clamp on. The mitres are really good, it's just that I'm using a cheap mitre saw and they're never going to be perfect. They're amazing at all three corners, but this one was just a fraction out. Glue, sawdust. But my plan is to inlay some of these coins. Now I've had them knocking about for ages and we're soon to have a lot of new coins in the UK without the Queen's face on. So I'm thinking if I clean these up and inset them into the epoxy, could be a colossal waste of 50 quid's worth of epoxy, but it might be awesome. Anyway, I'm gonna use some vinegar, baking powder to clean them. In the past, I've cleaned coins with tomato ketchup, but that stuff's more expensive than epoxy nowadays. Let's see how that, God, that stinks. Let's see how that goes. Oh my, it's watering. While the coins were in that solution, I decided I would put a coat of epoxy on the table. Now this isn't gonna be a pour as such, it's only gonna be a small amount of epoxy that I'm gonna paint onto the table. The reason for this is twofold. Number one, I'm hoping that that coat will fill in any spots where there's no glue and hopefully the epoxy is not gonna pour out all over my floor. The other reason is I can sit the coins on top of it and the coins can stick to it. Now I know coins are heavy, but I don't know whether the epoxy as it cures will push them up and out of whack. So I'm going to make this coat up, just do a thin layer of it and stick the coins to it. How good does that OSB look though? Oh, I needed to wait till the pennies were clean. My multitasking hasn't worked out. After realising my mistake of waiting until the pennies were actually drying out to pour the epoxy, I rushed over to the cup of pennies in that vinegar and bicarb solution and I thoroughly rinsed them and thoroughly dried them. Best I could with the tea towel and then I put them next to the radiator in the house for five or ten minutes as well. My next step was just to add them. Now I didn't want to go for coins absolutely everywhere and I didn't really know what would look best so I started just putting them in the corner and I didn't know whether I was going to have them branching out from one corner. I ended up putting them in all four corners and I didn't really like it. It looked a bit too uniform but 
I was stuck with it because they were all covered in epoxy and I didn't want to get any fingerprints or anything on them. So I just went with it. It's been a couple of days since the last segment. Now, the epoxy just was not setting in the garage. It's just too cold. It's still getting down to minus one overnight. So I had to move it inside. Now, that's fine because that first epoxy layer was just the coating. The next one's gonna be a pour. I'm hoping there's no cracks for it to seep through. The carpet does need replacing in there and that's the first room on the list to renovate in the house. Doesn't mean I want two liters of epoxy. And that's what I've worked out as. I'm gonna need two liters. So to work that out, you take the depth, the length, the width, multiply those three numbers together and that will give you the cubic millimeters. That's right. Then you divide it by a thousand and that will give you the milliliters. Now I worked out as just shy of two liters. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a one liter pour and just see how deep we're sitting. And if it goes on the carpet. This time though, I'm gonna use the gloves because I got lathered last time. I'm also gonna mix a couple of drops of this black pigment in. I don't want it to be black, I just want it to be blackish. Now I've heard that you really don't need to use much of this. I can't tell you because there's no instructions on it. Oh, there are, well, it's in German. No sprechen Sie Deutsch! One, two, three. We'll see how that goes. So I ended up adding about 10 drops of the dye and my arm is about to fall off. I've been stirring for five minutes. Now I have created a load of air bubbles, but it's a thin pour. So I'm hoping if I pour, leave for an hour and then go over with the torch, it'll pop those bubbles. Don't really know though. I'm getting kind of like a smoky look, which is what I want. I'm just wondering whether to add more because it's only a thin layer. This is uncharted territory. Bloody expensive uncharted territory. 60 quid for this and I think we're gonna have to use the lot. Still, it's always good to have projects that don't sell that have cost you a fortune. So it was all fun and jokes at this point, wasn't it? Little did I know what I was doing was maybe the right thing, maybe the wrong thing, but it certainly didn't work out. So if I'm left with an unfinished, failed project at the end of this, well then why am I sharing it with you? Well, over the last year or two, I've got a lot of inspiration from two channels in particular. One is Jesper Makes and the other is Dana. Both of them are just amazing to watch and one of the things I absolutely love about them is yeah they've had a lot of success but both of them share their mistakes and I've actually learned more from watching Jesper fail with his epoxy builds or then somehow manage to make it successful and then Dana manages to produce the most amazing stuff in a tiny little workshop but both of them are honest about their mistakes and I want to be a channel like that as well I'd also quite like to have some of their success so that's all poured. That is as close as I'm willing to get to that rim. And it's very close. I'm really pleased with the amount of dye I've put in. It's created like a, a smoky black, which is what I wanted. I, I wanted something to hide the yellow. I like the texture of OSB, but fundamentally it's yellow when it's wet or stained or whatever. I really need to get one of those router jigs with the flattening bit on. Getting epoxy off is sad. Really sad. Sadder than sanding. Do you want to know what else is really sad? I don't think it's dry. A week and a half this has been in the house. This bit is solid and it feels like glass. But there's just this one patch here just a tiny bit tacky. I'm 
And all I can think is if it's not set now, is it going to? So that brings us to now. So the real question is, why did I start this project? Well, like I said, I've got a worm in my brain sometimes and once I've got an idea, I, I just have to go with it. The trouble is, by the time I'd invested in materials and the epoxy and, you know, 100 to 150 pounds gone into this project. That's aside from the coins that are in it, there's at least a 50p in there. So why am I not very hopeful? Well, few reasons. I've since done a bit more research. Turns out I need way higher grit sandpaper than I've got. The other reason is you're supposed to buff it. Now, I thought I could do that with a cloth, but it turns out you need a buffer thing. Looks like a sander, but it's for buffing. You also need to invest in expensive buffing compounds. I'm not willing to sink 200 more of my precious pounds into this project. So I've already considered it a write-off, but I'm going to invest another hour, sand it to the highest grit I've got, and then see what the result is. If it's a scratch mess, it's going to go in a skip. If not, it's going to be a scratch mess. The two things I just mentioned in the last segment are me thinking about where do I go with this table, but there's a reason I didn't address this table and it's sat in my home, much to my wife's disgust, for three and a bit months. It's because that section that I said didn't set never did. And what I find weird is underneath it, was rock hard, but it was just kind of like this sticky surface layer that was maybe a millimeter's it depth, just didn't set. Now, why is that such a deal? Well, number one, it epoxy in the sort of stuff that just wipes off. Number two is that sets that down one millimeter less. Now, I've never really tried to sand epoxy, but I know for a fact sanding through one mil of epoxy just to get everything level is gonna be a sad old time. But still, I persevered, I went through the grits and went up to 400, which is the highest grit I've got. And then a mistake happened again. So when you wipe away the dust, you can actually see through to the chipboard which is a good thing, I think. I've got some swirly marks on here, but I'm hoping they disappear as I go through the grit. I don't even know what my highest sandpaper is. All I know is that sanding is very sad, and this is going to take a lot of it. I can't even remember where I said I was up to last time I spoke to you. Kind of losing the will to live a little bit. About an hour and a half into sanding now, trying to do five or six passes every time I change grit. And I wasn't really concentrating and the sandpaper disc got clogged. Now I've got swirly marks in, which means I might have to start again. Before I do, I've got to give it a quick spray and just see what it looks like. That's frustrating. Where I don't have any swirly marks, it's very clear. Not crystal, but very clear. Where I saw those swirly marks, not clear. I don't want to go back to the start and do it all again. Hello, my name's Sad Ben. I did start again. Took it all the way back to 120, worked my way through the grits, five passes, wiping down each time. I'm never getting that time back. I went through a lot of sanding discs. And probably a lot of lung capacity 
I ended up on the second pass, putting a respirator on, all the doors are open, but still, there is plastic everywhere. And it might all be for nothing. Let's take a look. It's clear. And there's no swirl marks. Now I have got a little air bubble that's appeared here. Trouble is it's full of dust and I don't know how to get the dust out. And I've spotted it too late to actually fill it with super glue. As you can see, as the water dries, it kind of hazes over again, but that's because it's not being polished. But this has left me with a bit of a predicament. I've put all these hours into sanding it, and now I feel I've got to see the project through. But to really finish it, it's got to be polished and buffed. But I didn't want to spend another 50 quid on a polishing machined thing and then I load on pads and polishes. So I'm going to call this part one of the video. Whether there'll be a part two or not I don't know. I'm going to walk away from it because I've spent hours on it today, hours in the past, and decide what I'm going to do. Do I invest more money and then try and recoup that money? But there's going to have to be a hefty price tag on this piece. Or, at this point, do I just accept that I've wasted a hundred odd pounds on it and call it a day? Don't know what to do, but I'll see you in the next one, whatever that project might be.